So today's video is about word movers embedding uh, paper, a cheap uh, word movers distance classification of a document. Uh, it will, this will tell you what is a word movers embedding for documents and how it approximates the word movers distance between documents. Uh, if you like videos like these, uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, you know leave me uh, if you have any sort of interesting comments. Uh, I'm always interested to learn more about uh, these things. I'm still kind of a beginner, so let me know. Um, all right, so what's earth movers distance? So earth movers distance is a minimum amount of dirt multiplied by distance needed to transform one pile of dirt into another pile of dirt. So we have, you know, we have this one pile and we will approximate it by a histogram and we would like to, you know, move the dirt uh, in such a way uh, from this pile into this pile such that we minimize flow times distance. That means that, for example, if we transform part of uh, this uh, this bin into this bin, uh, we will multiply the amount that, that was transported by the distance and we minimize that. Uh, despite the earth in the name, the better analogy than this uh, transforming of a pile is actually a transportation problem. So, for example, a good good example of a transportation problem is a cost optimization of transportation of gold ore from mines to refineries, where each refinery can accept only a certain percentage of the ore. So the uh, earth moves distance is also a distance metric between probability distribution. That is because you know probability distribution sum up to one, so all of them have the same amount of dirt, which is the requirement, right? So uh, so the problem above can be restated in a following question: How to transform uh, this geographical distribution of gold ore into this geographical distribution for the least hauling cost? Earth move resistance computation complexity is super cubic, unfortunately. So uh, it scales with the uh, third power of the uh, amount of bins in the in the distribution. Right. So uh, you can read more about this in this network flows, theories, algorithms, and applications. And uh, there are also papers on approximating earth move distance with quadratic complexity in general case and with linear complexity if we allow precomputation, uh, for example, in document search in a database. What is earth movers distance? Uh, I mean, what is word movers distance? Word movers distance is like an earth movers distance, but between the text documents where probability distribution is over word vectors, so, you know, that is the domain of the distribution, and those word vectors are words of a document. Probability is a normalized frequency of uh, unique words in the documents. Distance between word vectors uh, is usually causing similarity. Uh, word vectors in above can be, for example, uh, word to vec embeddings, fast text, glove, and maybe even contextual embeddings, uh, but I'm not sure there. Perhaps I haven't tried. Uh, word movers distance versus uh, word embedding weighted average similarity. Word embedding weighted average, uh, embe uh, average embedding is a vector calculated as a frequency weighted average of word vectors in the document. So I take all the word vectors uh, uh, that are in the document and I do just the weighted similarity. I, I do, just do average of them and when I want to calculate distance between documents I just do cosine similarity, right? Basically dot product. So uh, WMB is this uh, more detailed information, right? Because it knows about all the words, the bag of words that was in the document. So it captures more semantics than um, just averaging of the vectors into one. Uh, but it has also much higher complexity. Uh, as I mentioned, it has a cubic complexity uh, in the number of words compared to just linear complexity uh, in case of uh, cosine. So how does word movers distance compares to bird similarity? So uh, it would be interesting to compare. Uh, I'm actually not sure about the details of this. If you know about this, let me know. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe. And uh, 
if I understand correctly, uh, BERT is a, a linear complexity since it is convolutional model in the length of the uh, document. It will probably have, you know, better, uh, better accuracy, but uh, there is a still a question, uh, since it is a relatively large model, how it will compare to with more resistance if we actually ran on the comparable hardware, right? Or if we did some kind of a factorization of the vert move resistance. For example, uh, there is a, a certain similarity model from Google called Blurt. So, um, that would be interesting to look at. Uh, maybe I will do some comparison in future. Uh, I will let you know. But otherwise, if you know about this, let me know. Word movers embedding. In oversimplified terms, word movers embedding is a vector embedding of a document such that its dot product with documents in a collection approximates word movers distance between the documents for less computational costs. To address the main computational complexity, we need to cut costs of the word movers distance calculation, which is, that's the cubic part, right? Uh, could we make one of the documents in each side of the WMD function calculation smaller for a small constant size document, uh, omega, the complexity of word movers distance uh, would be nearly linear instead of a uh, cubic and I will actually should add citation in here but it's true so if we could compare all documents not against each other but rather against R of uh, R of much smaller documents we could get complexity down to just number of documents times number of uh, uh, the smaller documents um, and then L times logarithm L, which is a complexity of calculation of WMD. That is much smaller than N squared L square L cube uh, logarithm L. So how do we actually, can we do this, right? And how do we do this? So uh, we, if we, let's say, said uh, word movers embedding chaff vector to a one over squared of R exponential of um, uh, gamma of uh, word movers distance between X and omega J, some kind of chaff document, right? So what if we do this? So and we say that this uh, omega document, which we uh, use to calculate this embedding, uh, J's factor, this omega document is a randomly generated document. So let's for some moment assume that we know how to generate randomly documents. Why would above make sense? As this above, dot product of embeddings, uh, of embeddings, uh, of the embeddings is dominated by a random document that lies on the shortest path between the documents. Note that the random document can only be close to the shortest path between the documents if it is rich enough. So let's calculate the dot product, right? So uh, let's say we have a word movers embedding for X and word movers embedding Y we, and we do the dot product. What we will actually get? Well, since we expect that there will be only one random document uh, somewhere close to the shortest path between the document X and Y, then we can actually approximate this by uh, exponential of gamma of word move resistance between the two documents. So there is a, this short diagram, right? So if you have word movers distance, we have two sentences. Uh, for example, gave a research talk in Boston, had a science lecture in Seattle. And uh, so the word movers distance will be, you know, taking the most, uh, the closest of the words. Uh, for example, Boston will be close to Seattle, science will be close to research, talk will be close to lecture. 
So, and since we, we pair these uh, words approximately, and you know, we say most of the flow will be between these words, and this will uh, dominate the word moves distance. So what we do in word moves embeddings, we say that there will be a document which will contain such words that the document will become very much in between the, the two. And thus, uh, the distance, if we, you know, if we multiply these distances in the dot product, you know, if, if we multiply the dot product, we will actually get uh, one over R exponential uh, gamma uh, WMD of X and Y. So this is the trick, right? So we will, uh, this is how we can make the, uh, the dot product of the documents close. But, right, you are probably skeptical about uh, generating random documents. Uh, and also, don't we need to generate too many of the documents? That would defeat the speed up attempt, right? We, will, we wouldn't be get uh, lower complexity. And uh, how do we generate documents anyway? So the random words. To generate documents, we only need to generate enough random word vectors to represent words. Perhaps for the purposes of the proof or to have an ability to generate mixed words. And I think here the purpose is the mixed words uh, because it will turn out that we are trying to generate topics instead of actual words. And uh, we are instead to we actually are happy by approximately hitting uh, the word somewhere between some sort of clusters of words. So, so uh, to generate uh, random words, we will actually use an uh, observation that word to vec and glove vectrix direction is approximately isotropic. That means that the normalized word vectors are uh, from these embeddings are actually uniformly distributed on a unit sphere. We can generate these by uniformly sampling from hi hi hypercube and then normalizing the results. And thanks to uh, law of large numbers, thanks to lots of dimensions, we will actually get the you know, approximate distribution in an extra sphere. Uh, also, if you are interested about the norms of word to vec and fast text word vectors, uh, you can read more about that in my post. So, exclusive uh, document collection. But, uh, right, how many words per random document is enough? If we generate two large documents, we will not obtain any speed up. So, you know, so far I haven't mentioned any restrictions on the document collection uh, we would like to embed, but here it comes. The paper observed that the number of random words uh, is okay on the order of the number of topics in the collection of the document. So we have a document collection with a small enough topic count we should obtain a good accuracy by just using the number of topic while reducing uh, time complexity. So how many random documents? Thanks to fast convergence, the paper found that the count on the order of thousands is enough, um, which was incidentally also on the order of documents that they actually had in their testing data sets. So I'm not sure here um, how many would be actually needed uh, for a larger document count. I would expect that we would uh, need, you know, we would need to grow this number of randomly generated documents, but perhaps some kind of lag would still be fine. So full algorithm is following. So we generate our random documents and in following way, we generate random document size D. Gen we generate D random words. For all input documents, we calculate word movers embedding projection 
to just uh, generate the document and store it in matrix Z. And after that, we return matrix Z containing the embeddings. So the kernel of approximate truth. The approximation actually is motivated by analytic proof of convergence of the word movers kernel defined in the uh, defined below to the word movers distance. The proof utilizes a theory of random features to show convergence of the inner product between the WMD to a positive definite kernel that can interpret it can be interpreted as a soft version of WMD. So the kernel is an integral of the P and then we have these two features, uh, right? And the features are defini defined as in this way. How uh, W and the, uh, how the word movers embedding compares to KNN WMD. So this method complexity, as I mentioned earlier, is number of documents times number of uh, documents that were randomly generated. Uh, that those could be potential on the number, on the order of the number of documents. Uh, and then uh, complexity to calculate um, word movers distance between documents and that is L times logarithm L. When random document size or topic count is constant and kind of a small, right? So uh, the topic count, I think, uh, will actually increase something in, in, I think about logarithm of number of documents, so potentially the complexity is understated here. But it still stands in contrast to KN and WMD invariant, where n squared uh, is multiplied by, by cube of L, right? And also they saw some slight improvement in classification accuracy. So thank you very much. I hope you got the insight into the paper. Uh, the paper is actually here. There's a link in the blog post. It's worst movers embedding from board to back to document embeddings. Uh, the authors are Ling Fei Wu, Ayan A. Su Yen, uh, Kun Xu, uh, Xu Balakrishan Chen, Vidbrog, Ravi Kumar, uh, Carnegie Mellon University, IBM Research. 2018. All right, thank you very much.